Over four million British people have opted to be their own boss, hoping to get closer to their dream lifestyle. The dream is to live by the sea, have your wife and your kids there. I chose a life and made it happen. We've built up something that's successful. It's been the best thing that we could have possibly done. Yet for most of us, giving up the security of our current life is overwhelming. We have financial commitments that tie us down and don't know whether to follow our hearts or our heads. But what if you compared your current life to the other ones you could be leading? Could running a cafe on the coast be an option? Or would village life in France be a good future for your family? Could you afford the costs? Or ever be brave enough to take the plunge? It's never too late to start living the life you want. In this series, people will radically change their lives forever based on the principles of comparison. They'll find out exactly what they are worth. I've got a cheque here for £113,000. Wow. And what's really important to them. We're not doing this just to make a lot of money. We're doing this because we want a better lifestyle. For me, this is no contest. Before deciding which new life they want to be living. Tonight, it's Anne-Marie and Martin. They'll evaluate three new lives, but they've got two very different outlooks on the future. What's the most important thing to get right? Money. It's twaddle. I'm sorry, but it Steady? is. Steady? Almost 18 million people in the UK dream of living the life they've always wanted by running their own businesses. But figuring out exactly what to do and how to do it can seem like a huge challenge. I'm Carlton Hood, and I used to run Confused.com, one of the country's biggest comparison websites. When we're making important decisions, often we can be blinded by too much choice, and we end up making an emotional call. That's why we love comparison websites. They allow us to filter and narrow down those options. I want to apply that approach to one of the most emotional and important decisions of all, choosing a new future. One couple who urgently need help are Anne-Marie and her partner Martin. For the last 25 years, Anne-Marie has worked for a lettings agency in Mansfield, and Martin has been a stay-at-home dad who looks after their two children, Sophia and Lydia. I feel like I have lived the normal, go to work, come home, do this, go to work, come home, do this, then it's the weekend, then it's the Sunday night dread before the Monday morning. They are desperate to change their lives, but don't know where to start. People go through our lives moaning and groaning about circumstance and environment, but do absolutely nothing to, to make it any better. Um, and I'm one of them. I'm going to show them three potential futures tailored to key criteria they both want out of a new life. On their own, they've struggled to agree on the way forward. I'm very much the one that would risk a lot on the toss of a coin, and Amory will bring it right back and say, no, no, no. We are really quite different people. We have to change this somehow. Martin and Anne-Marie are about to begin a life-changing process to decide what to do with their future. And it starts here. I've scoured the market for businesses for sale, and I've gathered all the elements of their lives in one space. Everything from their finances to their family. I'm doing this so I can get them to assess their current lives and make some clear decisions about the future, looking at it both rationally and emotionally make some really tough decisions to shape the future life they're going to lead together. Oh, Marie. my word. Hello. 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 Martin. Hello. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, at good last. to meet you too, at last. Yeah. So do you still recognise this couple? Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Comparison has to start with an understanding of your current life. So it's really important that we know about uh, the life you lead today because that's what we'll be comparing inevitably everything else to. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and maybe we should just consider that as our starting point. <laughs> OK. okay. <laughs> Mummy was a little bit like Daddy because... 
because <laughs> she was the one who was always working, who was always away. Earlier this year, I've been made redundant. So it seems a completely opportune moment, as if it was meant to be. I'm very comfortable with the whole idea of the roles now reversing. Is it for table one, please? I got involved at the local pub to get experience working in a professional kitchen in case that's something that we ultimately go down the route of. I'd love to pursue my furniture hobby. There are some beautiful shops out there and I go in and I just think, oh, this is just like heaven. How, how nice would it be to have this as our own? Martin and I have differed quite a lot on location. I'd love to be by the sea. The kids would love to be by the sea. To be able to finish school on a summer's afternoon and go to the beach, fantastic. I think family and friends ties here for me are really quite important. My mum is, is 81 and I think it would leave a big hole to not be near her. I would happily move to Timbuktu tomorrow with the clothes on my back and my family if the circumstances were right for us there to then have a prospect of a future. What I would like to have a nice business together. I shall miss the children. I'd rather they didn't go away than in other words. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. God. How did it feel watching that? Oh my word. <sighs> I don't know. <sighs> Emotional, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Obviously we you know, we do we need to make the change, and it's just, it's getting from, mm. from A to B. It's getting there. Well, I think we understand quite well now where we're starting from. So shall we move and, and think a little bit about where we might be going to? OK, deep breath. There are currently around 35,000 businesses for sale in the UK. From the £1.9 million spa hotel in Northumberland to the £55,000 cupcake shop in Hampshire. Now, how does that feel as a starting point? Um, Daunting. <laughs> right. And, of course, that's as far as most people get, mm -hmm. because that's just bewildering. And, and how do you go on from there? Four key factors will determine which of these 35,000 lives will be the best fit for Martin and Anne-Marie. I've established that when it comes to place, Martin wants to live by the sea, and Anne-Marie wants a village life near her mother in the Midlands. For a profession, Martin wants to work in the kitchen, and Anne-Marie is more interested in retail. The price of a new business is also important, and I've worked out exactly how much Martin and Anne-Marie have to spend. Their family home is mortgage-free, and I've had it valued at £250,000. Like a third of all families, they have less than £500 in savings, but they do have a second property. If they sold it and paid off the mortgage, they'd make an additional 69,000. And the figure that I have come to is 319,000 pounds. Oh, okay. Now, how does that feel? <laughs> I really am so excited about, it's when you see it like this and all that that could do for us. And okay. I get to keep this. <laughs> it's yours, it's already yours. But the whole point is we're gonna spend that. Right. Or some of it. Yes. And okay. that's what we're going to explore. How exciting. By knowing how much they have to spend, where they want to live, and what they want to do, I've narrowed down their options. 448. More manageable. Right. But this is where it gets tough. I want to get that number down to just the three possible lives that are the best options for them. To do this, I need to know the final and most important factor, their life priorities. They've given me a list of the ten qualities that are important to them for their future, but no one life will give them everything. So is a dream house more important than a dream job? Are good schools more important than location? Or is no commute more important than being close to friends? What's the most important thing to get right? Money. That was very clear. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's money, and it's what, it's just bags of it? Yes, preferably. Right. The as much as better. possible. Yeah, I think so. Anne-Marie, are you still as one here? No, I would say family. Family? I, I, I can't put half a million pounds on that lady's head and say I would rather have that than have the last ten years of my life next to my mum. To try and make these emotional decisions rationally, 
I've devised a priority analysis test. OK, you're good to go. Yes. That forces them to rank the importance of one priority against another. Village life or commute free? Well, I would say commute free is more important. I agree. They'll have to make tough decisions, but by doing so, we'll rank their ten priorities in order of importance. Dream job, dream home. Definitely dream job. Agreed. Friends nearby, disposable oh, income. God. It is a no-brainer. It's disposable income. Okay. Family nearby for me. You would rather be near the family and have rubbish money than be far away from the family and have good money. I don't know. It has to be income. OK. Anne-Marie is conceding to Martin on her top priority, family nearby. Disposable income time with the kids. But she'll need to be more persuasive to get other choices to go her way. We need money. You just said that time with the kids will always come top, no matter what. And now you're going to money and saying money's more important. It's twaddle. I'm sorry, but it Steady. is. Steady? And everything you said about having time with the kids, then you're favouring money over it. So it's not. It's time with the children, like you said it was. OK. This is tough. I can now reveal to Martin and Anne-Marie the four priorities that they determined are most important for their new life. Let's see how the results of the test have come out. Time spent with the kids has come out on top, followed by disposable income. Yay! <laughs> so you didn't concede that no, much? Good. Next, they want good schools for the kids, followed by a chance to work in their dream job. How happy are you with that list? I didn't expect income to come in as number two. That wasn't in my head. Right. I should think you're delighted. I'm, I'm speechless. It's not what I expected to see. I think we can understand from this process why many people find this so difficult. Mm. Mm. It's easier to stay put, because yep. these are really, really tough choices to make. I now need to go away and find three new lives for you to consider in more detail and to put these priorities to the test against. OK. The next time I see you will be when we look at the first of your potential new lives together. Fantastic. All right. The priority test result really surprised me. I expected family nearby to come up much higher, especially since it's so important to Anne-Marie. I'm going to bear it in mind as a fifth priority when I do the assessment of future lives, because I'm convinced it's going to be important, and she just didn't stand her ground on this occasion. Coming up, I'll be taking Anne-Marie and Martin across the country to decide their future. From a rural escape in the Peak District to a winter wonderland in Nottinghamshire and a life on the coast of Devon. Two-thirds of British people want to change careers, with nearly half saying they'd walk out today if they had something else to go to. Recently redundant Anne-Marie and stay-at-home dad Martin have asked me to help them decide on their future. Hello. Hello. Martin. Hello, so nice to meet you. They've agreed what their most important priorities are for their new life. Dream job, dream home. Definitely dream job. Agreed. And they've revised their budget upwards to £450,000 to include potential borrowings. Using that information, I've reduced their options from 35,000 lives and found three that I think could be right for them. Each life centres around a business for sale and a property to live in. I'll be taking them to visit all three before they have to decide which one is right for them and whether they're ready to take the plunge. Our first stop for life number one is in Sulcombe in South Devon. It's a long way from home in Mansfield, where Anne-Marie's family are. It's an upmarket town, and thanks to the tourist industry, it's a great base for business. It has good schools, and its climate makes it feel more like the Mediterranean than Mansfield. Good morning, guys. Welcome to South Devon. So, we couldn't really have come further away from home. First impressions? Fantastic. Beautiful. It is. Yeah. But Anne-Marie, it's not going to tick the family nearby box, is it? Certainly not, no. <laughs> How would your mum feel about this? Um, uh, mixed, obviously. Sad. But she's, you know, she'll put a, she'd put a brave face on and say it would be all right. That's not really what she'd think. 
But I think Anne-Marie might be won over by the business at the heart of this new life, Italian restaurant, Catch. This leasehold restaurant is well-placed to take a slice of Devon's two billion pound a year tourist revenue. Solcombe has a population of just 1,800, but in season it jumps to nearly 20,000. And it's the only Italian restaurant in town. But what makes this place fantastic value for money is the three-bedroom apartment upstairs. The total cost of this life, £132,000. So welcome to Catch. Wow. It's an Italian restaurant, thriving little business, actually. Should we go inside and have a closer look? Yeah. Come on in. This is wonderful. It is wonderful. It's cosy, isn't it? Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. And it's open flat out um, in the season, so seven nights a week, um, and as many lunchtimes as they can do. And then the nice thing is that low season, they just open kind of three nights um, a week. Um, so there's actually more time that you can spend at uh, home uh, with the kids, right. uh, which is good. So it is quite a seasonal business. Running a restaurant can be risky, with around 700 closures a year in the UK. But the Italian restaurant market is booming and is worth nearly £2 billion a year. And alcohol consumption brings in big additional profits. Wine sales in restaurants and hotels totaled £1.3 billion last year, with a 300% markup on the average bottle. So, Martin, do you think this could qualify for your dream job? Yeah, be, be fa but it could, could be fantastic, absolutely. Uh, Anne-Marie, what, what, what are your first impressions of the place? Perfect size, I think, looking, right. looking in for us. I love the layout as well, the whole balcony yeah. thing, and we can see a bit of the sea. Should we go and have a look at the back? Yes, let's. Yes. With his chef aspirations, I knew Martin would be excited about this business. But I need Anne-Marie to see what a fantastic opportunity this is as well. Solcombe could easily be out of their price range. Property prices here have doubled in the last 10 years, and a third of homes cost over a million pounds. But Catch offers the perfect solution. It comes with its own three-bedroom apartment. So if we just go through here, have a quick tour. The flat will provide a great start for them while they found their feet in Solcombe. Wow. I wasn't expecting this at all. What a surprise. I know, it is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And then it does give the option of a place for family to stay if they're visiting, yeah. you know. And, and as we've seen, it can be a lovely place to visit. I think, Carlton, that that's one of the most important points you've made, is that Grandma can come and visit. You know, we've got a place where she can come and see us when we move in. When, when are we moving in? <laughs> Martin's ready to move here, but it's down to him, not me, to persuade Anne-Marie. I can immediately imagine myself here. Can you? In, in this entire setup, absolutely. Um, and if it was, you know, 10, 20 miles from home, I wouldn't be thinking twice about it. But it is the distance between where mm. everybody else is that I, that I love and, and, and where we are now. But I think that, for me, the dynamic of your relationships with friends and family might move to a different plane if you move further away, as silly as that sounds. Because a lot of the time, you, 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 you don't spend as much time with people on your doorstep as you could, but when you're further away, the time you have with them is more quality. Or is that nonsense? That's very clever, Martin. Yeah. Yeah, very cleverly put. I don't want Anne-Marie to write off this life just yet, so I've arranged for her to meet the current owner of the restaurant. Hi, Donna. Hi. Who relocated here four years ago. I got reservations about moving so far away from my family and uprooting my girls and moving yeah. them to a different location. You know, what's been yeah. your experience? Well, um, my son Jacob, he's 13. Living here for him is fantastic. He's taken up surfing, they go out on their boats. It's a really, really nice lifestyle for What about for them. you? How have you managed to meet people? Because it is such a small town and not very many people live here, everybody makes a real effort. When we, when we first arrived, we were like the talk of the town. Like, Ooh, who are you? And, you know, yes, all of yeah. these questions. But it was really, really nice and we were made to feel really welcome. Despite the owner's assurances, I'm not sure that Anne-Marie is convinced about moving so far south. But will this life still be a serious option for them once we've been through the figures? 
the price to purchase the business is £132,000. Wow. I'm surprised. Are you? Yes, I guess I am. I thought it would be more. I thought it would be a lot more. Profit. So its profit last year was £38,000. OK. Right, OK. Ideally, for me, I'd like to be able to shoot for something that's going to be 60, 70, 80,000 a year, ultimately. Mm. So, Anne-Marie, yes. if this business were five miles from where you currently live, would you buy it? Yes, I would absolutely seriously consider it. Being far away from family does seem to be a big stumbling block for this life, even though it takes care of three out of their four priorities. When it comes to work, running the restaurant will be Martin's dream job, leaving Anne-Marie with more time to spend with the kids. There are also great schools in the area, but the income levels of this business aren't quite as high as Martin would like. Three out of four priorities is a good start, but there are still two more lives to see. I can see that Anne-Marie's desire to be closer to her mum is going to be a massive influence in this search. So for life number two, I've decided to expand their original criteria. I'm taking Anne-Marie and Martin over 200 miles north to the edge of the Peak District. It's a world away from life number one in Sulcombe, but it offers a beautiful rural life. So life number one was very much dancing to Martin's tune, whereas I think life number two is going to be much more Anne-Marie's cup of tea, uh, with more of an arty, crafty element thrown in. Um, this is also on their doorstep. Their current home is just 40 minutes up the road, which means that we're closer to this lady. The leasehold business at the heart of this life is a combined gift shop and cafe, which is currently on the market for £100,000. I've also been scouring the property market and have found this three-bed semi, which offers great value at £330,000. So the total cost of this life is £430,000. Guys, how are you? Very good. Hello. Nice to see you again. Hello. Good morning. So here we are, back up north. This life is almost three times the cost of the Italian restaurant in Sulcombe. But I hope they'll be able to see the fantastic potential for growth here. So, Anne-Marie, what are your first impressions of the business? Is this closer to your kind of dream job? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This whole environment, nice and warm, beautiful things to look at and come and see. Do I smell food? You do indeed. Okay. There is something for you here as well, okay. Martin. Seasons serves cakes, sandwiches and coffees, which might not be what Martin had in mind for his dream chef's job, but there's good money to be made here. The British obsession with coffee can generate big profits. A typical two-pan cappuccino costs around 20 pence to make. That's a huge 1,000% markup. And the figures for food also stack up. Margins in cafes similar to this one could reach 70%. A bowl of soup and bread costing less than one pound to make can be sold for four pound 95. I've been examining the accounts in detail here, and I need to discuss the figures with Martin and Anne Marie. The business is on the market for 100,000 pounds. So it's well within your budget. Seasons takes a total of almost 200,000 pounds a year. However, running costs are high, and so profit, the money the owners actually make, is considerably less. Its profit, on average at the moment, is about £28,000. Right. right, OK. 28000 is, is a smaller figure. But I think there's a simple way of increasing this figure. There's about 18000 of salary costs that if the two of you were spending time in the business, one full-time, one part-time, you could avoid. I think we should be looking at this business, if you were running it, as a business with a bottom line of about £46,000. More attractive. And there's some possibility for expansion here. Next door is empty and could potentially be turned into either a restaurant or a showroom for Anne-Marie's furniture. Martin, is this big enough for you? No. <laughs> and I'm already thinking about next door immediately. Right. Um, I would look seriously at the proposition <laughs> next door from launch um, because I, th I think it's essential to get that in and quickly. How I feel is that Martin's constantly he's going straight to step three without giving any attention or thought to stage one. 
So it's quite interesting, isn't it? We had a difference on location. We now got a difference on, uh, let's say, attitude to risk, how quickly we're going to build the business. Uh, you guys have got to come together to make this new life work. How are you going to bridge those gaps? I don't know where we start. Um, it's, it's, we've always, uh, as a couple, been intrinsically different from a risk perspective. These two things together are actually great. There's energy and ambition and power and goals coming from you, and there's caution and planning and reason coming from you, Anne-Marie. This is a very powerful combination. Bring it together, you can be a great team. Martin and Anne-Marie don't seem convinced, but these two have got to find a way forward. I think we have to remember that Anne-Marie and Martin really are standing on something of a burning platform here. She's been made redundant, there's no money coming into the house, that's putting a strain on their relationship. It can't continue like this, they have to make a change. Coming up... We're in Nottinghamshire, where Anne-Marie is tempted... You've got an even bigger grin than the last time. Uh -huh. But will these two ever agree? We're not really out of our comfort zone if we took this business on. So I don't really know at the moment how I feel about that. Millions of us dream of changing our lives, but most of us are overwhelmed by the challenge of making it a reality. I'm here to cut through the confusion and to show that it is possible to give up the day job and change your life to do something you love. I've been showing Anne-Marie and Martin three exciting opportunities for their future. They've seen what life number one in Devon would give them, but would Anne-Marie ever be willing to move away from her mother? How would your mum feel about this? She'd put a grey face on and say it would be all right. It's not really what she'd think. Now we're looking at life number two, on the edge of the Peak District, a freehold cafe and gift shop costing £100,000. But the business is just one part of this life. 20 minutes away is the village of Baslow, which could become their new home. It's a charming place with outstanding schools. Property prices here are more affordable than Sulcombe, but possibly not quite to the extent that Anne-Marie and Martin expect. OK, so this is the home that comes with life number two. Um, it's just a couple of minutes walk from the centre of the village. And property here actually is quite pricey. I think it reflects the picturesque nature of the surroundings. So this one's on the market at £330,000. Oh, okay. oh, my word. But it does come, does come with a few uh, surprises. Is one of them a pool? Let's go take a look. It's a 1930s semi with some period features. It has two reception rooms. Oh, little lounge and four double bedrooms. The decor is a little dated, but the real selling point for this house is at the bottom of the garden. So, you're right on the River Derwent, the same one that's flowing right in front of Chatsworth House. This, Carlton, I like. Makes that price a little more... Understandable. A little more acceptable, yeah. And I think this is very much part of life number two. It's the tranquil kind of village idyll. Yeah. Um, and coming down here and uh, enjoying a glass of wine and watching the swans mm. float by. Yeah, it's beautiful. Fantastic. As our day exploring life number two comes to an end, Anne-Marie and Martin have to decide whether this life is one where they could overcome their differences. Are you going to be able to work as a team to make life number two successful? I can see the team prospects here better than they were in Salcombe. I think I agree with you 100% on that, in terms of... Uh, Salcombe would be me. Right. I'm not drawing a line under it for a moment, no. even though Anne-Marie appears to be no. doing so. Um, initially, when you mooted the figure of 28,000, um, that's not really floating my boat enough to, to swing me to bust the guts of run my own business. But it's the, the nature of that business is such that it's something that can work for both of us. Um, and with the potential for growth, it's something we can consider. This life in the Peak District also ticks three of their four main priorities. It would allow them to spend more time with the kids, and there are also great schools in the area. The split business would also give them their dream jobs. Perhaps this life doesn't give Martin the income he would really like, but it would bring Anne-Marie a lot closer to her mother. The most important thing that's happened today 
is that they've actually started to work together on a life. So Anne-Marie is a little less cautious, Martin is coming to the table with ideas, they've crossed that bridge, they're working together, they stand a chance of making this one a success. For my final suggestion for Martin and Anne-Marie's new life, I'm able to bring them a lot closer to Anne-Marie's mother. It's a business in the north, in Nottinghamshire, which isn't officially on the market, but I think it could be exactly what they're looking for. Longdale Craft Centre sold traditional handmade goods, but closed down three years ago. It needs a lot of work, but it could be the kind of challenge Martin and Anne-Marie are after. The site is to rent for £23,000 a year, but I've calculated that Martin and Anne-Marie may need to spend at least another £55,000 to make it viable. I've also found a three-bedroom house in Ravenshead Village, just half a mile from the business, on the market for just under £300,000. This brings the cost of life number three to £377,000. Right. Welcome to Longdale Craft Centre. Come on in. So, Anne-Marie, this must actually look quite familiar. It does. <laughs> You've got an even bigger grin than the last time. I have. Going up here. Right. One, two minutes that way. So you're now as close to home <laughs> as it's possible to get? Yes. Yeah. OK. Obviously, it's been closed for a little while, but the premises now has new owners, and they're looking to refurbish all of the buildings uh, and then put it on the market as a business for £23,000 a year leasehold. Right. Oh, right, OK. OK. Obviously, the internal refurbishment, what you wanted to do, that would be kind of up to you. OK. OK. This place could give both of them the dream jobs they want. There's a crafting gift shop and a 60-seater restaurant. Important thing to remember, though, with this business is it's going to require enormous vision to bring it to its full potential. I don't think that's something we're going to be shy of, the, the necessity for vision. It's got so much scope that um, it would be down to what we do, to whether or not it would work or not. This think, is so. really something you could get your teeth into, Absolutely. isn't it? I mean, this is your... You're looking for a 90-hour week, I think. I mean, yeah. it could be here. So, welcome to the restaurant. This is 60 covers. Yep. So, a nice, uh, nice size, actually. A little bit bigger than Catch and a lot bigger than Seasons in terms of people to serve. This has huge potential. I mean, we, there's no doubt about it. I've, I've really got an opportunity here to put my own touch on a restaurant business as opposed to the others where, you know, they're already upward and going and, and we've, again, got a blank canvas opportunity here. Startup businesses do generally require less initial investment and can be a great way of becoming your own boss without breaking the bank. It's also a good idea to look at ventures that will provide different sources of income. Here at Longdale, alongside the restaurant and craft shop, there are 14 craft workshops which could be rented out for up to £20,000 a year. Today, it feels like you both see the potential of this idea, and that's so important to make it a success. The fortunate part about um, what you're showing us today is that there are key elements for both of us. It's big, and I like big. It gets the creative juices flowing, and there's so many different things we can do here. I feel like... I can get more excited and more involved from a business perspective because I haven't got to worry about meeting new friends for the children and meeting up with mums and doing all of those things because I'm home. But hang on, guys, what about priority number one? Do you remember what that was? Yeah, that's a very good point. Spending time with the more children. time with the family. That goes out the window if we take this on. Have you thought about that? Um. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about Martin and Marie's reaction. And I think what's happened with this business is it's got under their skin and the imagination potential they see here is meaning that other things that they thought were number one or number two priorities, they're able to put to one side. So it's a big thumbs up from both of them about the business. But I want them to see what else life number three has to offer. I think nearby Ravenshead Village could give them a great quality of life. It is quite close to their current home in Mansfield, but in fact many of us buy houses within just three miles of where we currently live. So after travelling hundreds of miles, could the answer to their search be under Martin and Anne-Marie's nose after all? So this is a lovely um, three-bedroom house. It's actually quite spacious inside and it's on the market for £299,000. OK. 
This is a deceptively large family home with some very spacious rooms. Lovely fireplace. It is a nice fireplace. It has three bedrooms. Oh, blimey. I see, I just want to move in and leave all their it stuff. It's nice, isn't it? And a fantastic family bathroom. I do like, yes. You've always wanted one of these. I have. I can see myself in that at the end of a hard day's work. Can you? I think these two could easily imagine themselves living here. So we've travelled the length of the country and we've looked at a few diverse lives. How is this final one stacking up for you? I love it, obviously. <laughs> First out the stocks. Yeah. yeah definitely for me. Um, <laughs> it's not Solcombe today. No? Um, I think there's... It, Today gives us a blank canvas, and um, so I'm excited about that. But uh, as I've said many times, pounds, shillings and pence and figures are so important to me to work out how we can, with our budget, make a start in something as shed-like as what we've just been in. And Marie, you're looking so calm, and yet this is one of the biggest challenges that we've actually seen. Are you acting like this will be a walk in the park? I think... It's no worries about the children, it's no worries about family and what we've left behind. It's no worries about um, moving into unfamiliar areas because we have all of that behind us. So it's 100% concentration on our career. I don't mean to throw a spanner in it, but... But you're we're throw one no, in. Because we're not really out of our comfort zone if we took this business on. We're, we're four miles from where we previously were. Um, so I don't really know at the moment how I feel about that. I'm disappointed because I thought Martin was more excited about this life and once again it does tick three of their four priorities. Work and schools are all good but given the scale of the project at Longdale their time with the kids might suffer in the short term. However this opportunity is the only one that has the long-term potential income that is so important to Martin. And there is the bonus of Anne-Marie being minutes away from her mum. Coming up... Well, it's time for you to put me out of my misery, I think. It's decision time for Anne-Marie and Martin. But have they been able to agree? Prepare to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Three months ago, I met Anne-Marie and Martin Killick, who are desperate for a change. I've shown them three potential new lives, and now it's time for them to take the next step. Today we're back where we started and I'm going to give Anne-Marie and Martin a chance to compare their three new life options and see which one suits them best. Then they get a chance to try before they invest and see whether this new life will really live up to their expectations. Shall we just remind ourselves of the three lives that we've been and looked at? Okay. I love the vibe of the place. I want to be near the sea, and the business we've seen is a nice, tidy business in a box. I think Sulcombe is a beautiful place. It just feels a very, very long way from home. I can see Martin getting very enthusiastic about the cafe, and myself just getting into that gift shop and doing something with it. I think that could work. I'm excited at, at what could happen with this life. <laughs> it's just whether or not I can manufacture growth. I think it's got such character and I could see what it could become. It doesn't appear to me that Amory is fully conversant with the scale of the risk attached to this investment. It's almost like she's not overly concerned about it because it keeps her at home and near mum. It's always going to be at the back of Martin's mind that it's a compromise to stay here. I think today's made him think but I think his heart is still in Salcombe. Well, that's quite emotional stuff, but I think we should maybe look at it a little bit more logically. Let's see how those three lives really measure up. Our starting point was Martin and Anne-Marie's current life. It provides good schools for the kids, but fails to deliver on any of the other priorities they've agreed are important. But now they have three new options. New life number one is centred around the Italian restaurant in Sulcombe. It's the cheapest life and delivers on three priorities. 
but it doesn't provide enough disposable income. Life number two includes the craft shop and cafe in the Peak District. It also ticks three of their four priorities, but again, it doesn't quite measure up to Martin's income requirements. Life three, the craft centre in Nottinghamshire, doesn't tick their most important priority, time with the kids, but it does tick the other three, and Anne-Marie's fifth priority, being close to her mother. So I think it's time to make a decision. Which life have you chosen to test? Prepare to be surprised. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to share what we've decided? Or not surprised. You're not going to guess, no? No, <laughs> I'm not going to guess. Life number three, craft centre. Life number three, <laughs> craft centre it is. Yes. So, Martin, are you on board with this? Well, I have to ask. Yeah, it's strange because when we first look at the um, summary of our lives, um, and Marie's the one in tears. Now we're looking at staying local, and I feel like I want to cry. Um, no, on a, on a serious note, um, there is huge scope, but we could certainly, you know, look to seriously start something quite exciting there. So, Anne Marie, you know you're on the hook to make this work now. Absolutely. That's my great get out, Colin. Because if it all fails, <laughs> I could just say, your fault. No, 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 you can't do that. You can't set that up for the future. You have to both go into it to make it work. Now I need to know if the reality of running this business matches up to their expectations. So I'm giving them the chance to try it out before deciding whether to hand over their savings. Longdale Craft Centre needs a lot of work to make it viable. So I'm taking them to a place that mirrors exactly what they might expect once their own business is fully operational. The Ginny Ring Craft Centre in Worcestershire. It's a profitable business and just like Longdale, has a restaurant and a gift shop. It's beautiful. OK, have we got another two floors yet? Yeah? I'm putting them to work here on an average Friday. This is Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Head chef. Be good to me today. Will this convince them that they could take on the challenge at Longdale? We're doing an aromatic chicken today with that. Okay. If you could fry some of those off, I've got some pans on for you. You have to make a soup. We have a fresh soup every day. We have a chilli filling for the jackets. Then we've got fish, rice to cook. I've got potatoes steaming from mash. So oh, a whole load of my cakes. word. So you haven't got time to stand still. No, no. All of these onions out between the two, Shirley? Um, yes, please. As quick as you like. Because um, this is proper cooking. But you've got to be in the deep end, haven't you? So, you know, again, it's part of the learning process. Gorgeous. Not for me. <laughs> Are you sure? And Marie is completely at home in the gift shop. So who's that a present for then? My granddaughter. She'll be thrilled. It's lovely just meeting different people on there on a day out, having a lovely time. It's fantastic smiling faces in the workplace, which is really good. <laughs> really good. Back in the restaurant, I've arranged for a coachload of hungry customers to really test Martin's abilities. All these people are queuing now. Yeah, this is a normal queue. Oh, my word. This is mad. But he's in danger of being overwhelmed. Where's my banoffee? Well, I don't know. Nor do I. See, I'm just looking completely rubbish now, aren't I? You'd have done this by now. <laughs> we'll get to you soon! Americano with some warm milk. Where's Americano? I've been waiting ten minutes. I don't like waiting. I get very impatient. But Martin... Have you selected your cake? ..may have found his calling. The sponge on this is incredible. I think that's worth a try. Today has been vital in allowing them to assess their new life. Here he is. Still Hello. Hard. How are you? How you? And after an eight-hour day, I want to find out what kind of impact it's had on them and what their decision is about this life. I've learned new things today. I've been skinning um, sea bass. Right. I think the lady in the kitchen um, credited me with far more skill than I actually got. I made a right mess of some puff pastry. You haven't poisoned <laughs> um, anybody? No, I haven't. It's been okay. fantastic, Brilliant. yeah. How does this compare with the life you have today? It's been something I've wanted to try for a long, long time, and actually to get my teeth into it today was amazing. And so different in a positive way? Yes, yeah. We started out with 35,000 lives. 
And by using the comparison process, we're now down to just one. But will Martin and Anne-Marie choose it as their new future? And I have to ask you, what is your final decision about this life? I want to go for it. I want this, this badly. Um, and I did the day we walked in, in all the snow. I'm 100% behind us launching our first ever venture into new business at Longdale Craft Centre. So Martin and Anne-Marie have decided that they do want to invest in the craft centre. Life number three in Nottinghamshire. It's brilliant to hear you say that. I think you're hugely brave, and I think it's the right decision for you. I really do. I think it's the one life that you will both commit to that gives you the challenge and you the security and both of you a role. There were times when it felt like Anne-Marie and Martin would never agree on anything, let alone a brand new future. So it's a real result that we found a life that they are both equally excited about. I am 110% behind getting this moving and, you know, the sooner we can get stuck in and get paintbrushes out and start making this happen for us, the better for me, so bring it on. <laughs> Next time, I'm helping a young, stressed-out family compare three lives that give them more quality time. But will the best match for them be in France or the UK? From the bedroom to the boardroom tonight on 4 7, on 4, sorry, meet the ladies designing the ultimate vibrator with sex toy stories. See what the buzz is about at 10. We're off to meet the anomalous mind management abductee contactee helpline next, though. Confessions of an alien abductee. Coming up.